wizards, I'm Whitney Van Lanningham. And I'm Chris Carr. Before we dive into the magical bromance between Dumbledore and Grindelwald, we'd like to thank AT&T for sponsoring this portion of our video. Harry Potter and Fantastic Beasts fans can go to att.com slash wizardingworld to check out exclusive behind-the-scenes clips, interviews, and surprises from J.K. Rowling and the cast of Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Want a sweet exclusive poster? Then head to your local AT&T store now through November 22nd to snag yours before they disapparate. There's six different posters available, and the best part is they're free. Put your galleons back in your vault at Gringotts, because there's no purchase necessary. AT&T will be giving one pair of posters per customer, so grab a friend and head on over to your local AT&T store. Personally, I can't wait to see how Grindelwald manages to convince almost everyone around him that his plan is right. Check out this clip. The crimes of Grindelwald have been crimes of violence and terror, but we also see his immense seductive power. Grindelwald seeks to rally all power into his camp. Grindelwald believes that wizards should no longer live in hiding and that muggles should be ruled over by wizards and witches. He justifies everything to himself and makes it appear rational, in fact at moments appealing, and that's how he's clawing people to his cause. Your name will be written in glory. Do you think Grindelwald would be able to turn you into a dark wizard? No, no way. I'd never let him get inside my head. I don't know. I think I might fall into his one blue eye and pledge my undying allegiance to him. Okay, Death Eater, calm down. Once again, special thanks to AT&T for sponsoring this portion of our video. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for! Allow us to dive deeper into the background of the two most powerful wizards of their age. This is the history of Albus Dumbledore and Gellert Grindelwald. Grindelwald. Gellert Grindelwald was born around 1883, but we aren't sure where exactly. We know as a young wizard he attended Durmstrang, so we can assume he was raised in Northern Europe. As a student, Gellert was obsessed with power, most notably the Deathly Hallows, the three most powerful magical items in the wizarding world, the Elder Wand, the Resurrection Stone, and the Cloak of Invisibility. According to folklore, possessing all three of these items could make a person the master of death. Grindelwald was fascinated by this legend and carved the symbol on the walls of Durmstrang. Durmstrang has a reputation for churning out dark wizards, so it should be no surprise that Grindelwald ended up such a bad egg. Even with that reputation, though, Grindelwald was expelled from Durmstrang for performing weird experiments and attacking his classmates. Upon his expulsion, Grindelwald was sent to Godric's Hollow in England to live with his great-aunt, Bathilda Bagshot. If you've done the reading, you'll know she's also the author of A History of Magic. Fueling Grindelwald's obsession further, he discovered that one of the three brothers who first owned the Deathly Hallows was said to have lived in Godric's Hollow. He promptly relocates to do more research, and also because he isn't exactly welcome back in his hometown. But fate struck when the Dumbledore family moved to Godric's Hollow to cover up Ariana's explosive, uncontrollable magic. Dumbledore had recently returned home after graduating from Hogwarts when the two first encountered. With his father gone and his mother recently passed, he had assumed the responsibilities of head of the household. Grindelwald and Dumbledore quickly formed a close, intense friendship. The two were inseparable, and both shared an obsession with the Deathly Hallows. Grindelwald shared his plans for wizard dominance over muggles, which he believed was for the greater good, and Albus actually found his way of thinking fascinating, instead of super creepy and horrifying. And that's what we hope to see in the upcoming movie. All this Grindelwald stuff isn't as black and white as you think. He actually justifies the violence and terror he commits against muggles, and manages to make that sound appealing to other wizards. He's incredibly intelligent, but also incredibly manipulative. Obviously, Albus's brother Aberforth was not a fan of this relationship, which is reasonable. I wouldn't be super chill if my brother had fascist friends either. Eventually, the three boys engaged in a three-way duel, where Albus and Aberforth's sister Ariana got caught in the crossfires. Ariana's killed, Grindelwald flees, and obviously these guys aren't buddies anymore. Murdering your friend's sister? Deal breaker. Oh, and Aberforth clocks Albus at Ariana's grave site and breaks his nose. Fun fact. Grindelwald's first introduction in the Harry Potter series takes place when Harry opens his very first chocolate frog on the Hogwarts Express, revealing a Dumbledore trading card. The back of the card mentions that defeating Grindelwald is one of Dumbledore's highest achievements. And all this goes down on page 81 of the Sorcerer's Stone, 11 paragraphs down. What? I read about it in Hogwarts A History. Dumbledore. Albus Percival Wolfric Brian Dumbledore was born in the summer of 1891 in Mold on the Wold, England to a muggle mother and a wizard father. But Dumbledore's childhood and adolescence was anything but happy. He grew up with a brother and a sister. 
Aberforth, who lived in his brother's shadow and had a lifelong fascination with goats, and Ariana, who was attacked at a young age by muggle boys and permanently traumatized from the experience. His father was convicted of killing the boys who attacked his daughter and sentenced to a lifetime in Azkaban. Dumbledore was followed for years at Hogwarts by rumors that he too hated muggles like his father. Luckily, his intelligence and compassion won over the teachers and students at Hogwarts, and it wasn't long before he was considered the brightest wizard of his age. Unfortunately, Ariana accidentally killed their mother when one of her accidental magic episodes misfired. Dumbledore was forced to move back home to take care of his sister so that his brother could finish school. He felt trapped by his family and unable to reach his true potential as a wizard while he was stuck at home in a caretaking role. But everything changed when he met Gellert Grindelwald in Godric's Hollow. Even though he had spent years at Hogwarts trying to convince everyone around him that he wasn't anti-muggle, listening to Grindelwald's ideas about total wizard domination fascinated him. He was feeling resentful towards and trapped by his family, and in walks an extremely good-looking wizard with equal intelligence. Dumbledore felt like Grindelwald was his only mental escape from the life he was living, and was even temporarily seduced by Grindelwald's power. Plus, have you seen Grindelwald? I don't blame Dumbledore for falling in love with him. He might be a bad guy, but you gotta admit, he seemed like the whole package at the time. Attractive, insanely brilliant, and a way for Dumbledore to escape his misery. It makes sense. J.K. Rowling mentioned in an interview that Albus Dumbledore was gay, and that the greatest tragedy in his exceptional life was falling in love with Grindelwald. We don't know yet if Grindelwald ever reciprocates those feelings for Dumbledore, but we've got our fingers crossed for Rowling to confirm or deny that detail in the future. The night before Dumbledore and Grindelwald were planning to run away together, Aberforth gave his brother a serious reality check. How could he leave Ariana behind? Aberforth told him bluntly that if he wanted to run away with this guy, he'd have to take their sister with him. That's when Grindelwald steps in with the Cruciatus Curse, striking Aberforth, which is probably why Ab didn't like his brother's pseudo-boyfriend too much. In the chaos of battle, Ariana is killed, and Grindelwald fled the scene of the crime to avoid being arrested, and Albus begins his journey to become the wise, talented wizard we know and love from the Harry Potter series. I don't know about you guys, but I'm really excited to see Dumbledore for the first time as a more playful, carefree version of himself and also to explore the darkness that manages to grow within him. Be sure to head to your local AT&T store to pick up exclusive posters from the movie now through November 22nd. Thanks again to AT&T for sponsoring this video. In case you didn't have your quick quotes quill out the first time, once again, the website for exclusive Fantastic Beasts content found nowhere else is attcom wizardingworld Head over there now to hear J.K. Rowling reveal even more about her favorite characters.